distant northern sky At that point I realized I don't know where it comes from But I know it's okay If this is some Welcome to Karen Holton's podcast. Karen permanently lost 178 pounds and found happiness and success by following her own advice. She has now developed that advice into the quantum health transformation. Heal, evolve, and thrive. Karen's website offers a free webinar workshop series, and you'll also find tools, methods, and practices to assist you to become the change you want to see in the world. She believes that we are all connected. Heal the planet by healing yourself. Connect with Karen at her website, karenholtonhealthcoach.com and through Facebook at facebook.com slash quantum health transformation. Now for the podcast. Today, I want to talk about the concept of rejection and how rejection has brought me to some different kinds of understandings and how rejection has really been a wonderful, wonderful experience for me in the long run. One of my many challenges is uh, impulse control, and I don't seem to have that filter that other people have that sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Let's just put it that way, of being able to weigh my words very carefully The only way I can really do that is if I know a situation's coming up and I spend time meditating about it and thinking about it and weighing my approach so that I can be as diplomatic and as face-saving to the other person and to myself as possible. Otherwise, stuff just comes out my mouth. And I'm as surprised often to hear what comes out of my mouth as is often people around me. And even listening to my podcasts, It's almost like I'm making these for myself because I go back and I listen to them and I get a deeper understanding of my reality by listening to my own podcasts. So you would think I would have had that all put together in my head before I started to speak, but not really. It's kind of the opposite for me. Anyway, that being said, um, it presents uh, some challenges socially for me and people often jump to conclusions regarding my intention and my ability to control the way I communicate and interact with other people. And you got to understand, too, there's quite a spectrum um, depending on how, whether I've had a balanced nutrition for the day, whether I'm well hydrated, whether I've had time alone to contemplate, how much time I've spent around a lot of people. I'm very energy sensitive, and so I need probably twice as much alone time as what I have when I'm around people. Not to complain, I'm actually very happy with uh, my lot in life, and I'm in a wonderful position, and I'm very fortunate, and I have many, many, many blessings. So just to keep this in balance, you know, as a the whole of my life, you know, there are challenges, as we all have, because these are what shape us and make us who we end up being in the long run, which is what matters. Long term, not not necessarily short term. So going back to rejection, I've always been a very social person and I love being around people and I find it very exciting to be around other people. And I'm ever so curious about everything about them. I'm ever so curious pretty much about everything. The things I'm not very curious about are the things that to me are kind of empty Like, there's nothing wrong with acquiring and having things to make our Earth journey comfortable. But when the conversation is just all about China patterns or the latest gadget, for me, that becomes boring really, really fast. And so I always assume that I'm not the only one in the group that feels that way. So after giving a respectful amount of time to conversations, I often introduce my own subjects of interest, and people often see that as very random. 
But for me, oh, no, I've been waiting a long time, very patiently, really working on my impulse control, really working on my patience to not spring this all over the place from the moment I get there. And sometimes I'm more successful than other times in doing that. But long story short, there was a day when I really wanted to belong to groups. I always liked to belong to groups. I felt safety and comfort within my posse or my pack. I'm a very um, group-oriented individual. I've learned to adapt to being more on my own, as you will see in my little story here. But I noticed what often happened was tension would build within the group. Often my perception was different than the more powerful people or the more influential people within the group or the people that could sway. And often I would not be given a chance to really explain or to educate them so that they would understand where I was coming from. And or and or they couldn't go where, where my mind naturally is. But I could go where theirs was, but there was a limit to how much time I could stay there or want to stay there, really, to be honest, because there's just so much more out there. Anyway, what eventually often would end up happening, if not me, someone close to me within the group, is the tension would build within the group and the perception of that person would become more and more negative until pretty soon there would be some kind of an emotional or professional eruption and often it would mean the person who was rocking the boat or wasn't the perfect fit was then pushed out and the group feels better afterwards and it's just simple simple scapegoating but if we don't recognize our behaviors and our, the behaviors of ourselves and the behaviors within the groups that we operate in and if we don't look at things analytically we can often fall into that pattern. I've been a part of it. We've all been a part of it. And it's a way of releasing a group tension. But there's a lot of other ways that are much easier and much healthier and have a completely different outcome. But it's just sort of easier to keep doing the same old, same old. But I find the same old, same old kind of boring. And my life is short and I want a bang for my buck. I want to, I don't know how long I'm here for. And I want to have a wonderful experience. And I have a wonderful experience. Anyway, getting back to uh, rejection again. Oftentimes I wouldn't even get a chance because the minute I walk in, the perception from the way I was dressed or the way I looked or something about me, the tide would already be turned. And that would be just the way it was. And I would make attempts to be involved in the conversation things, but pretty much get shunned and then just walk away and go, well, obviously that group wasn't for me. And I'm talking very small scale up to very large scale, including religion even, or societies, nonprofit societies I volunteered at, things like that. So it used to get me down because I really wanted to fit in, but I'm a different, I'm a horse of another color, as they say. I'm a different kind of person. And there's nothing wrong with me. I'm just a different kind of person. And often people, we live in a society where we are living amongst either adult children or childish adults. And there is quite a difference. Adult children are generally aware of the work they are working on and uh, have a bit of a plan. Childish adults just never grow up. And there's quite a huge difference there, especially regarding wisdoms. And the adult child often takes responsibility where the childish adult does not. So we're living, I would say, in a society predominantly of childish adults. And so instead, because they don't want to look at themselves, they project everything outwards and keep everything that's not acceptable on the outside to contrast how they're so acceptable inside. But the reality of it is, they have very, very low self-esteem and generally a high ego because the ego is trying to make up for something there, right? So anyway, a lot of groups are behind the scenes driven by childish adults because they haven't learned that we're all okay. And we all have gifts and we all make mistakes. And through love and compassion and kindness and mercy and tenderness, we can transform any group into an incredible power. The same as we can for self and same as we can for society in general. 
and on a global scale. And on and on, it's all the same thing. Anyway, it used to really get me down this rejection thing, and I would often then turn it back and not take responsibility for myself and the part I play. I know I could dress more conservatively. I know I could really spend all my creative energy while I'm in a group just trying to not swear and probably do pretty good with it. But I miss out on so much of what's going on when I do that because it takes so much of my central processing unit to keep the control. Whereas if I'm just accepted for the way I am and I'm around people who get me, there's not an issue and I'm very creative because I'm very free. Getting back to rejection again, I always wanted to fit in and I always felt rejected and I felt so sad and lonely to be outside of the group and very jealous of those in and I'd make up stories to sort of say, oh, they're a bunch of assholes anyway, I didn't want to hang out with them anyway or whatever, find fault with them, but you know, long term that wasn't really working for me. And then I noticed it started happening when I was down and out with the nonprofit societies. And for if you've listened to my other podcasts, you've heard me make reference to the victim triangle. The victim triangle is not just internalized inside of us through years and years and years of believing in it as the only option, but it's also manifested in, in society and amongst charities and amongst nonprofits. And again, as above, so below, it's all through every layer. It's all there unless we choose to step off and do something differently. And in the victim triangle, you have the victimizer, you have the victim, and then you have the rescuer, and they often change places. And it keeps everybody's minds extremely busy, but it's very counterproductive, and it just doesn't work. Because it, first of all, what we do is we caricaturize the person that we're blaming as, as the victim, or the victimizer, or the rescuer. The rescuer is the good person, right? The victim is the innocent person, and the evil one is the victimizer. But that is not really what it's this like black and white and a shade of pink in there. Like that's nothing. We have the full spectrum. We have so many options and ways that we can handle things and look at things. But anyway, getting back to the nonprofits, I go to the nonprofits and I refuse to play the victim, even though, you know, I sincerely needed their help. And that's why they were there. Indeed, that's why they were there was to help people who had circumstances like mine. They didn't know what to do with me because I didn't play the role and they couldn't be the rescuers. And oh yes, they can find many, many victimizers, even society or, or the government or policy makers, you know, faceless victimizers. If there wasn't, you know, that, oh, your partner is being abusive to you or whatever, whatever, right? It's often more ethereal than it is three-dimensional hard copy in front of you. So anyway, I was really angry that I wasn't getting the assistance I needed and that I was being perceived as something other than and something worthy of rejection again. And this happened over and over again, and it wasn't until I realized, oh my God, the day the sun came out for me, was that it was a great blessing that I was being rejected because the mindsets and the energy of those groups was not a match for me. And it doesn't mean I'm better, but I'm different. I'm definitely different. And I see things very differently. And so by being an observer, fly on the wall, um, someone who watches a little bit outside of the different groups and dynamics going on, there's so much uh, wisdom to be gleaned. And so much for me to go, aha, that's why I do what I do. You know, bringing the lessons home, fixing in here. Most of us are a bit of a mess, trying very hard to hide that, mainly through addictions, but also through belief systems. But again, those can be addictions, and down the rabbit hole we go. So coming back to rejection, what a blessing every rejection has been to me to finally build my energy to the point where I went, wow, I have something amazing here. It's mine. It's unique. It's amazing, and there are many people out there who are capable of getting me, but they're complicated too, and so there may not be an intense bond that happens, but there is something there, a recognition and a exchange. We exchange data like codes just in brief smiles and recognitions and conversations that may never happen again. One becomes very connected with everything, and so... 
What rejection allowed for me was to actually see how connected I am to everything and to never feel alone. I mean, if you want to go down that slippery slope, if we have more bugs that live in us than cells we have in our body, we're never alone. We have all the other dimensional universes and realities. Oh, just because we don't happen to stick our finger out there and touch it and say, oh yeah, I'm getting the limited amount of information that I get from my six senses, although it's quite a bit, but that being said, until we, you know, we can see it with our other senses, our other kinds of eyes, you know, and that gets back into opening up the chakras and why I do the work I do with Organite, because it's just so amazingly good for us on such a high energetic level that it all filters down. Whereas if we do the work at the bottom level, it doesn't filter up. It's the work on the bottom level. So the higher we go in the work that we do, the more it filters down and corrects things. So pretty soon you find out your neuropathy is gone and your arthritis isn't bothering you. Your eyesight's getting better. Your plantar fasciitis is gone. Your hemorrhoids stop hurting or you don't have an atom migraine in a month. See, this is what happens from this contemplative work that I encourage everyone to do. So, getting back to rejection again, in those spaces where I didn't have the old style or old paradigm help, I was forced into new paradigm reality where I could think in different terms, in different ways, see different options, different solutions, try different things, experiment, fail, pick myself back up and keep going. I mean... Really, the fact that we're alive and we're here right this moment is a miracle, truly a miracle. There's so many things against, the the odds against us even just being here. There's something very amazing about this very moment right here, right now. So, rejection gave me all of this and so much more. So now I can flutter around into groups and... As long as I can, it wears me out trying to keep quiet and be polite and politically correct and no foul language. Oh, my goodness. Oh, for some of us, it's so hard. It's the hardest thing we do. But we keep doing it because we love people and we see the goodness in them and we see the goodness of everything. And we feel sad. Instead of being angry when I get people try to scapegoat me, which they actually can't anymore because that's their issue, not mine. It has nothing to do with me. So I may as well just learn what I can from it and then look to put my hand towards the next thing I'm doing because there's so much to do and so much to be and so much to experience. So if you've ever been rejected, be, be glad. If you've been kicked out of your religion and shunned, rejoice. If you have had someone you love betray you and disappear and no longer be there for you, there's such a reward in that. If you've been beaten, literally, if you've been raped, if you've been any horrible thing that you could imagine has ever happened to you, or even not so horrible, not everyone has horrible lives, rejoice because that thing happened in a moment, but the blessing from that experience will reward you for the rest of your life if you let it, if you let it. So... Often, all of those ugly things are also different faces of rejection. They're blessings. Wait till you find out the great power and joy of not being part of this world. There are people who go into communities and separate so they're no longer part of this world, but we can definitely do it energetically. And then we find these huge areas of where we overlap with other amazingly creative and magical people. And pretty soon, you don't miss anything of the old paradigm. There's just so much to be happy about in the new. I love you all. I hope you keep trying to do what you, what you can. You're all worth it. You're all lovely. And you're all loved more than you could ever dream possible at every moment, no matter what you're doing, what you're thinking, or where you're at. The love is always there. All you have to do is let it in. Splendoring to endlessness All my inner strife to rest For time gives birth to a readiness It all makes sense well more or less And the sages put me to their test With 
heart and soul to do my best To find the answers to my quest I wonder and I must confess I don't know where it comes from But I, I know it's okay If this is all in Okay. It's okay.